Hi, welcome to the next of our series of mini lectures. Uh, today we're going to be talking about light emitting diodes or LEDs. And LEDs, you know, are a source of light. We put electricity in and photons come out. And of course, the sources are the first things, the things that supply the photons to a spectrophotometer system. So we're really focusing on this element of the generic spectrophotometer we've seen before right here. I want to give a very brief background of LEDs since you are supposed to have seen this before in some of your earlier classes, such as devices. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the physics, really rather talk about some of the application issues of LEDs and how we do some simple calculations on them and what some of their drawbacks and, and, and good things about them are. Um, as you know, LEDs use a form of fluorescence that's created by a flow of electrons. They are after a diode. We can forward bias them and reverse bias them. They have an IP curve and so on and so forth. But the way they emit photons is slightly different than incandescent sources or some of the other things we've been talking about earlier. Essentially, as you know, semiconductor materials have a conduction band that we call EC, a valence band, EV, and an energy between which electrons are not allowed to be at, called the gap, and electrons, essentially, that get injected into the conduction band at fairly high energy, uh, can transition back down and fill a hole in the valence band. And when that happens, of course, the electron and the hole are canceled out. But because the electron loses energy, it has to go somewhere. And in semiconductors that LEDs are made of, uh, they're fairly efficient at converting every electron into a photon of energy, H nu. Now, we know that our band gap is given in electron volts. For a red LED, a typical band gap is 1.6 electron volts. Um, and that band gap essentially directly translates into the photon energy, H nu, where in this case H is given is Planck's constant in terms of electron volts, or another way to calculate this is Hc over lambda E, where E is the charge on an electron, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. And from this, given the... Um, Given uh, Planck's constant, 6.62 times 10 to the minus 34, the speed of light, the wavelength of the charge on the electron uh, from the gap of a semiconductor or a LED, you can calculate what the wavelength or color of light that comes out is. Um, and so let's take a look at a diagram that's uh, technically not very, very accurate, but it gives us the right idea. For a red LED, you have a fairly small band gap right here. And the, you have a, a junction of n-type material that has extra electrons and p-type material that has extra holes up there or, or holes down in the valence band. And the um, recombination of these carriers takes place in the depletion region of the diode. And the small band gap, relatively speaking, for LEDs emits red light. If you have a semiconductor material with a larger band gap, uh, you would get a shorter wavelength or more energetic light. Here they illustrate yellow. A larger band gap still would give you green, and still a larger band gap would give you blue. Um, so let's erase some of this stuff and go on and look at our next picture. Now, as I've said, um, an LED is a diode. It has a forward and reverse bias. And it turns out that an electron volt is a very convenient uh, unit of measurement. So since the energy that the charge on one electron, 1 1.6 times to the 19, minus 19 coulombs, gets being accelerated or given an energy of one volt potential. And so it turns out that E gap in electron volts is approximately equal, so let's write approximately equal here, is approximately equal to the voltage that the LED turns on at. And as you know, this is an IV curve of a diode. Um, you get very little current until you reach a particular forward voltage, then it increases exponentially. And the forward bias, of course, and reverse bias, you hardly get anything. Um, and essentially what we see here is this curve, this IV curve, is drawn for a red LED because the on point happens to occur around 1.5 to 1.7 volt range, which just happens to be approximately the the energy and electron volts of a red photon. Um, the IV curve of a green LED is going to look somewhat different. It's going to stay flat here for a while until it gets to an energy 
of green, so somewhere right around in here, and start to come up. And so your green LED is going to turn on around 2 volts, and of course your blue LED, having a larger photon energy, will stay flat even longer, and this graph doesn't really do it because it starts to turn on around 3 volts or so, but your blue LED is going to turn on with about a 3 volt bias. So it's really interesting that the voltage an LED turns on at is essentially equal to the photon energy. Of course, the brightness of the LED depends on the number of photons that, that's emitted, and because photons are emitted when electrons uh, recombine with holes, the number of electrons you stick in, or the current, the number of electrons per second or coulombs per second you stick in, is proportional to the brightness. So if we can go back and get some black ink here and have a intensity versus current graph on LEDs, uh, not surprisingly, this graph is a straight line. Uh, the, the brightness of LEDs increases fairly linearly with current since the electrons are the things that are directly producing the photons. Um, now, let's go ahead and erase some of this stuff so we can make some room to draw in. And now let's look at some of the efficiencies of LEDs. Um, the well plug efficiency of LEDs is very good on the order of 10 to 30 percent compared to just a few percent for incandescent sources. So you emit more photons uh, for the amount of electricity you put in. But of course, you know you can't put amps and amps and hundreds of volts into an LED or the LED will burn out unlike your incandescent sources. Um, another good thing about LEDs is they have a higher spectral efficiency. The bandwidth of LEDs, as you've seen in many of the exercises we've done in class and as you see on the web page, is only tens of nanometers. So of all the, the electrical energy you put in, the photons come out in a fairly narrow color range, blue, yellow, green, orange, red, whatever, depending on the type of LED you buy. Now, the spectral efficiency uh, gets a little tricky if you actually want to calculate, say, how many watts of light you get out of an LED. Um, and that is for the unfortunate reason that uh, the light output of LEDs is given in terms of candelas. And so you might look up at DigiKey or Mauser on another electronics vendor site and get a data sheet on an LED and it says it puts out 2,000 millicandelas. Now, now uh, millicandela is a, the thousandth of a candela. And this happens to be a unit that's sensitive or depends on how sensitive the human eye is. So let's go through this really quickly. Uh, the, of course, the, the unit of power for, the, for light, like everything else, is watt. And it turns out that at the peak efficiency of the human eye, which is given by this curve down here, and we're going to look at the curve over on the right because that's the daylight response of the human eye and the, the spectral response of the human eye happens to shift at night. But the peak response of the human eye is at 560 nanometers. Um, and that's called a luminous efficiency of 1, as you can read off the curve, at 560 nanometers. And that means your eye is the most efficient at detecting greenish-yellow light and is much less efficient at detecting other types of light. Well, it turns out that 1 watt of light at 560 nanometers is 600 and 85 lumens, which is abbreviated LM, um, at 560 nanometers. Uh, if you want to know how many lumens there are per watt in another color, you just find the color. Say, let's say blue-green here. So let's go ahead and change my pen color. Come on, you stupid thing. 